Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Tunisian Atlantis Atlantis was described by Plato as an island located just beyond the Pillars of Hercules, and it was destroyed by the wrath of the gods, never to be seen again. Most myths of Atlantis state that it plunged beneath the waves of the sea. However, there is another theory that says Atlantis was actually located in modern Tunisia, and that it didn't sink beneath the ocean, but beneath the sands of Africa. Believe it or not, this was a hot theory prior to the Second World War. Scholars were obsessed with the idea of a Tunisian Atlantis. We know that Tunisia was home to some of the greatest civilizations of the ancient world, occupied by the Egyptians and even the Carthaginians who would wage war against Rome. We also know, based on archaeological excavations, that Tunisia was inhabited about 100,000 years ago by early humans. There is an interesting, little-known geological feature of the country. It's dotted with large salt lakes known as chots, which fill with water in cooler weather and then dry out during the summer months. One of these is called Chot el Jerid, and it's located right in the center of Tunisia, about 124 miles from the coast. Scientists agree that a large oasis once stood here, and they've even discovered the ruins of an ancient city nearby, as well as the remnants of an irrigation system. The fabled Pillars of Hercules may have been a reference to the Temple of Hercules, which can also be found nearby. Atlantis may very well have been an oasis society in the Tunisia desert. Far from the coast, a group of highly advanced people may have lived in a gigantic city of water and palm trees, but the oasis dried up, the society failed, and the ruins of Atlantis were buried by the sands of the desert. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below! Number 9. The Nibiru Cataclysm The Nibiru Cataclysm is one of the wildest conspiracy theories out there. It's a crazy theory that claims any day now, Earth is going to collide with a massive planetary object called Nibiru or Planet X. The idea came about in 1995 thanks to a woman named Nancy Leiter, who founded the website Zeta Talk. She claimed to have received a message from extraterrestrials dwelling in the Zeta Reticuli star system, and they wanted her to warn mankind of the impending doom. It was a wild fringe theory that blossomed in the 2000s, spread across the world, and is now well known by a lot of people. It's been debunked by every major scientist, seeing as a planet-sized object near Earth would have already destabilized the orbits of everything around us. Still, there are some who say Planet X is making its way toward us right now from the edge of the solar system, or that it's hiding behind the sun and so we can't see it. And soon, it will crash into us and all humanity will be lost. Number 8. Stoned Apes Despite all we know, scientists still can't figure out how humans evolved from Homo erectus to Homo sapiens in the short span of 200,000 years. Homo erectus had an extraordinarily small brain. It was one of our earliest human ancestors, but it wasn't about to win any spelling bees. 200,000 years later, Homo sapiens had evolved to have the big brains that brought us to the moon and back. Scientists are baffled as to how this happened. One of the stranger theories was proposed by a mystic and psychonaut named Terence McKenna. He proposed that over 200,000 years ago, Homo erectus began to eat magic mushrooms, scientifically known as Psilocybe cubensis. Eating magic mushrooms doubled the size of the Homo erectus's brain by quite literally opening up its mind. The effects of the magic mushrooms would have increased the desire to procreate, heightened clarity and focus to make hunting easier, and also would have stimulated never-before-touched language portions of the brain, inducing religious experiences. Scientists believe magic mushrooms could have worked as an evolutionary catalyst in early hominins. It would have pushed the brain to its limits, forcing it to become more complex and to develop better, more sophisticated thinking processes. However, it's still just a theory and hasn't been proven as fact. Number 7. Greeks in Peru In the 8th century BC, the Greek poet Hesiod described a place at the end of the world, a mysterious place where the horribly ugly Gorgons lived and where Atlas resided as a giant mountain. This mysterious place at the end of existence was bordered by a massive chasm filled with an impassable and treacherous sea. While this may just sound like a made-up story from almost 3,000 years ago, some believe it's describing a real place on Earth. For example, Dr. Enrico Matievich from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro claims Hesiod was talking about Peru. 
Specifically, the ruins of Chavín de Huantar in the Peruvian Andes. He even wrote a book about it called Journey to the Mythological Inferno back in 2011. He suggested that Homer's Odyssey was not supposed to take place in Greece, but was actually set in South America. While it may sound crazy, Matievich makes some pretty good points. For example, Hesiod's geographical description of the end of the world does fit nicely with the Peruvian Andes, and local legends going back thousands of years also match what the poet said. Hesiod wrote, The chasm is so great that once past the gates, one does not reach the bottom in a full year. This was almost certainly describing the gates of Pongo de Manseriche, a gorge at the beginning of the Marañón River. It very well could have taken the Greeks a year to navigate the length of the river, at which point they would have reached Peru. Then they came to a place called the House of Night, rumored to be the home of the Gorgons. This could have been Chavín de Huantar, a huge city resting in the Andes where strange-looking people resided that the Greeks had never seen before. What do you think? Did ancient Greeks make it to Peru and live to tell the tale? Let me know in the comments below. Number 6. Giants in America There are multiple theories from around the world that suggest there was a race of giants living on our planet not too long ago. But we're going to focus on the theory of giants in America, something that, if proved correct, would change the way we see history. The main evidence for giants living in North America comes from the 19th century. This was a time of great expansion in the United States, when mines were being dug, gold was being pulled from the ground, and new cities were being built everywhere. At the turn of the century, hundreds of reputable reports came in across the nation of giant skeletons being found. People were digging up ancient burial mounds across the country and finding the bones of humanoids upwards of seven feet tall. According to reports in local New England newspapers backed by the Scientific American magazine, skeletons were unearthed at both the Monks Mound and the Cahokia Mound, two of the largest ancient structures built by the indigenous people of North America. But that's not all. Giant skeletons were allegedly found in Martha's Vineyard, Deerfield Valley in Massachusetts, upstate New York, and in the Ohio River Valley. The Chickasaba Mound in Arkansas also revealed great big skeletons, some of which were 10 feet tall and had double rows of teeth like aliens. The craziest part is that by the time the 20th century rolled around, all these skeletons had vanished. All scientific publications began denying they had existed, and the whole thing became a conspiracy theory rather than real, tangible science. Number 5. The Creation of the Moon Scientists say there is a chunk of moon rock hiding deep inside of the Earth. The theory has been around for a long time and has something to do with the protoplanet named Theia. Scientists think that during Earth's infancy, 4.5 billion years ago, Theia collided with the planet and smashed into pieces. This is kind of like the theory of Planet X, only it already happened a really long time ago. Scientists even believe Theia is buried inside of the Earth's mantle in two giant chunks, each one the size of a massive continent. These pieces likely sit beneath West Africa and the Pacific Ocean, kind of like a pair of headphones strapped to the planet. Each one is hundreds of miles tall and over 1,000 miles wide. PhD student Qian Wan from Arizona State University says the chunks are the biggest things in the mantle. We know they are there because of scientific readings looking into the rock. We just don't know for sure if they came from an alien planet. However, seismic readings have shown something interesting. Seismic shock waves from earthquakes slow down abruptly when they pass through these particular chunks of rock. This suggests they have a chemical composition different to everything else in the mantle. They could be part of Theia, the hypothetical planet, which would also make them chunks of the moon itself. The theory also says that during the collision, a piece of Theia broke off and became our one and only moon. Number 4. Noah's Skeleton Back in 2014, the Penn Museum in Philadelphia discovered the remains of a dead man in their storage room. This individual died 6,500 years ago and was excavated from southern Iraq in 1930. His skeleton was then stored at the museum and forgotten about until just recently. He was 50 years old when he died and stood at a modest 5 feet 9 inches tall. He also may have been Noah from the Bible. The man was buried in a nondescript coffin without anything that could identify him. In that way, there is no actual way of telling if he was Noah from the Bible. However, he was buried in a 
deep groove cut into the silt, and the geology at his burial proves he was alive, following an epic flood. He wasn't the only skeleton on Earth, either. The team, back in 1930, discovered at least 48 graves, but they only packed one up and shipped it away for study. These people appear to have been some early race of humans living in the cradle of civilization after a devastating flood. There are some who say these were the children of Noah, the first humans living in a society after the flood. Others, like the archaeologists who worked on the analysis, say it's all just a coincidence. Number 3. The Legendary Hellhound of Suffolk Archaeologists in England discovered the skeleton of a gigantic dog in the ruins of Lyston Abbey. This canine stood seven feet tall on its hind legs, like a dire wolf straight out of a fantasy book. The remains were found in the same region where locals speak of a legendary hellhound called Black Shuck. The hound supposedly had red eyes like the flames of hell, a thick black coat, and it terrorized villagers back in the 16th century. According to the legend, the hellhound appeared on August 4th, 1577. It came during a storm, when the thunder shook the sky and the doors of the Holy Trinity Church in Blithburg burst open and the snarling dog ran inside. It tore through the congregation, killed at least two people, and then fled as the steeple collapsed. This was widely recorded at the time by multiple sources. As crazy as it sounds, most legends are somewhat rooted in reality, and the bones of the gigantic gigantic dog do seem to suggest that some kind of unusual beast lived near the abbey around 1577. Judging on the bones, the creature would have weighed about 200 pounds, which would have made it big enough to easily eat a man. Number 2. The Orion Correlation Theory There are a lot of crazy theories surrounding the Egyptian pyramids, and one of them is that they were built in direct alignment with the stars. In fact, the theory is talked about so much that most people simply think it's true. But the actual truth is a little more complicated. Yes, the ancient Egyptians definitely tracked the night sky. They knew the constellations and used the stars to make important decisions about planting and harvesting. The pyramids of Giza were built around 2500 BC, meaning if they had been aligned with the stars, they would have been aligned with the stars 4500 years ago. The sky did not look the same back then as it does today. This alone can pretty much debunk the theory. Still, Still, in the 1980s, a researcher named Robert Boval suggested the three pyramids of the Giza complex were made to mimic the three stars on Orion's belt. This simple theory spiraled into the Egyptian pyramids being seen as literal gateways to the stars. In official circles, it's called the Orion Correlation Theory. The idea is that the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids as a kind of landing pad for extraterrestrial visitors, and they needed to be aligned with the correct stars. Some even say there was once a Stargate here that allowed for instantaneous travel from Earth to someplace far away. As cool of a theory as it is, it has a lot of holes. First of all, the Egyptians wrote down everything that happened. Nowhere in any of their texts did they mention designing the pyramids to match up with the stars. Additionally, the pyramids were each planned at separate times. They weren't all designed at once, but one after the other at the behest of different pharaohs. There wasn't one grand plan, just a bunch of rulers who wanted bigger and more important impressive pyramids than their predecessors. Number 1. Stonehenge Pig Lard Researchers believe they may have just figured out how the megalithic rocks of Stonehenge were moved into place. If the theory is correct, it could confirm once and for all how Stonehenge was created 5,000 years ago. Researchers like archaeologist Lisa Marie Shilito made their most recent hypothesis by analyzing ceramic pots found near Stonehenge. They were taken from Durrington Walls, where the builders lived while the monument was under construction, the pots held trace levels of pig fat. Originally, researchers had thought the pots were used for cooking food, but it appears they might have been used to collect fat dripping off pigs as they were roasted. This pig grease would have been stored and turned into lard, and then it would have been used to lubricate sleds. The lubricating of the sleds with lard would have significantly helped primitive druids move the massive stones. They basically used the lard like water on a slip and slide to haul them across vast distances to where stones Stonehenge stands today. Thanks for watching. Which theory did you like the most? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you later. Bye.